What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch massive news roundup today. We've all been waiting on the edge of our seats for Overwatch 2 news, and it looks like there might be a big one coming next week. Now, I'll admit the evidence for this is propped up by two layers of leaks, leakception, but it looks legit to me, I'm convinced as all this lines up with things I had already thought. So first, Roberto Serrano leaked out that there's going to be a PS5 State of Play event that's yet to be announced, but will be scheduled for August 6th next week. And as you guys know, as we've talked about in previous videos, it seems to make the most sense to attempt to align Overwatch 2's release window near and around or exactly on the next-gen console's release, which is what this event would be aiming to hype up. This is for the PS5. So if this event is true, it will be displaying all of the launch window games they have available to them. And it was leaked to 4chan, the list of game trailers that are going to be featured at this event. The post says that they didn't have access to the files, but could see the name of them in the order that they came in. Overwatch 2's campaign set to be revealed early on in the event after a few other Activision properties, Call of Duty Black Ops Vietnam and Crash Bandicoot 4. So we're gonna know very quickly if this set list is correct, if this state of play event happens next week in this order. And I'm also interested in the internal communication on this where Call of Duty's new game has a distinctly separate trailer for the campaign and the multiplayer and Overwatch 2's trailer distinctly is going to be showing the campaign. And we already know that Overwatch 2's multiplayer is going to revamp Overwatch 1's multiplayer for everybody at the same time. So that indicates to me that there is a multiplayer trailer to be released eventually offset of this. Now I'm of two minds of this, of what this means for Overwatch 2's release date. Because on one hand, if they had the Overwatch 2 PvP multiplayer revamp ready, you would think they would show it at the same time, but not exactly. Because we're still playing Overwatch 1's PvP, right? We don't want to know all of the cool features that are definitely going to come in with the next game before we have access to that content, right? It'll make what we're currently playing feel kind of like a letdown when they're likely going to be changing loads of stuff for the sequel when that's released. Or my other thought is perhaps that section of the game isn't ready. As we'll talk about later in the video, Blizzard has been trying out some experimental modes like the 132 roll queue system or now a 2CP rework and sharing them with the community. But I gotta be honest, guys, I don't think any of that is to test for our feedback. I think when we receive the quote experimental cards their decisions and internal processes on it is like been done for six months or more blizzard only really shares what they're already dead set and done with in terms of tracking where they're at in development i don't think it is a good clue at all in fact i think it's completely disconnected from where they're at internally so with that being the case i could see an argument that the release date might be early 2021 maybe first quarter especially if they don't want to invade on their own call of duty sales in the holiday season of this year. That's something that I didn't think about when I've previously predicted that it would come out holiday this year, but the two franchises are quite separate, so maybe that's not a concern. Quarter 1 2021, I think, is the safest guess with all of the information we have, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it was still the end of this year. But I do think it's revealing that when Activision sends this trailer, the naming structure is very similar to how they do with Call of Duty. Activision typically does see the different sections of their games almost as distinct properties and handle marketing them separately. Overwatch 2 as a game is intended to be similar to the sales that they get for a Call of Duty campaign, whereas the multiplayer rework aspect of it is its own separate thing. And if I had to guess, we would get a glimpse of that very close to when it would be coming out. And I'm actually expecting quite a lot to be in it, making these experimental cards look like child's play in comparison to the number of heroes, modes, reworks. I don't mean to get your expectations too high, but they've sort of implied that that's the level of overhaul that they're trying to do with the game. Upgrading the graphics game-wide is like one indication of that visually, but everything else can be up for grabs, and I know that's what a lot of us are interested in. If we tune into this PS5 event next week, we may find out when Overwatch 2 is set to launch, which will give us a better indication on when we'll finally know what changes they're going to be making to multiplayer, as it likely will be close to the the launch date. Moving on to the news, everybody remembers the huge Genji buff that came through. Well, recently there was that experimental card that tuned him back a bit.
bit, putting his damage and recovery rate back to where it originally was, although retaining Reflect Cancel and the Titan Spread on his ult fire. I do know they attempted to put this into the live game, but that hotfix patch caused some issues, so they reverted it back. But do say that Genji will be tuned back soon with these specific changes in the live game. But the other discussion point, of course, is the dev team's response about their goals of the incredibly powerful Moira rework. They do say that they're not currently planning on giving Moira the team Wraith form ability, but instead, that was more of an experiment that they were trying out to achieve some higher level goals, balance aside. They weren't even trying to balance it. First, they want to work on the mechanics of it, with the bullet points being they want Moira to be fun to play, give her the opportunity to make big game impacting plays, and make her gameplay to feel skillful and dynamic. In the same way that Batiste has to time and manage his immortality field, giving Moira a team fade could be a very similar way to give her an impact play. And as well, of course, they were attempting to make the damage orb be a bit more of a skill shot that you place on somebody to melt them rather than it aimlessly damaging everything in its path without much intention put into it. So that's the general direction they're going with Moira, and we can probably expect further reworks to her or perhaps even more reworks planned for, I don't know, a sequel of the game, perhaps? Again, I almost wonder if this and multiple other reworks are already done for Overwatch 2, and this, along with the 2CP rework, is Blizzard throwing us a bone in the development process. But that's just one man's theory. I definitely think a Moira rework is a good idea. I just want it to be balanced, of course. A cleanse ability is something that the community has been asking for for quite some time. It was originally something that they wish Mercy had, and and as I said in my previous video talking about power creep and the direction I think Blizzard should go in order to address it, trying to keep the raw stats of things in check is step one, and having interesting interactions of abilities like a team fade would be step two. But they don't seem interested in following at least this line, so we're not going to see step three, which is figure out how to tune it to be in line with everything else in the game. Another example of this kind of thing, Andy GMB on Reddit made a workshop mod that shows off a playable version of Samito's suggested rework ideas. This orb would interact with shields like most other projectiles do, dropping to the floor if you miss it, but otherwise can stick to surfaces and explode, or similar to a Junkrat mine, you can explode it yourself in midair, giving it a skill shot component to it. And when you hit it, the enemy has reduced healing. Not quite an Ana anti-heal, but but a percentage-based debuff. So that's just one example of the type of thing they could consider. This is the type of complexity that I think adds depth to the game, whereas the hunter killer seek and destroy damage orbs that bounce in a room 10 times and randomly hit you to remove you aren't as interesting. Moira's current design isn't interactive enough to be easily balanceable. She just either easily is amazing or is just kind of meh. So I think this is a good direction. Moving on to the news, there's going to be a brand new experimental card be put up today 2cp or assault is getting a big rework or a failed one at that molly the community manager for overwatch explains that this is the type of experiment that they do looking at a mode like 2cp they apparently do a lot of these and this is one they think is interesting to share and get the community's feedback on they reworked the mode to deal with two problems one snowballing which is if you win a team fight early on point a you're going to have a massive ultimate advantage Advantage and be able to roll that over into possibly a quick point B and then the game's over quickly, which is the second issue they wanted to address that those short matches and blowouts don't feel good. More specifically in quick play where you don't play both sides. I personally wouldn't agree with this assessment. I think 2CP feels bad in competitive when it lasts 30 minutes, which is why I'm glad that they reduced the extra time bank you can even potentially get. So that improved the mode immensely to me. But when I play quick play and we get blown out on assault, I'm happy we're just moving on to the next map. What doesn't feel good is a long drawn out 2CP game where you draw a quick blowout and I feel it's easy to just go on to the next game. But alas, anyway, this is the changes they made in the experimental card. The new mode will play out like this. Each team will get a chance to capture one point at a time. So team one will try to cap point A with their time bank and they either succeed or fail. Then instead of going to point B, like you remember, the mode instantly switches sides and team two attempts to then cap point A. And you only continue on to point B if both teams successfully capped A. Then if both teams cap point A, 
a new round begins where you take turns attacking point B and so on. Each team gets a total of six minutes, no extra time after getting a cap. The pre-round timers have been dramatically reduced with all of this round switching. When you defend point A for the second time, there will be a new spawn room closer to the objective, which will allow you to stall, but they say it's because they just want to cut down on the setup time before the round. And they've done some tuning with attacker and defender respawn times in general. Most notably, the defenders will take longer to spawn when defending point B. Molly goes on to explain what the dev team found out about this experiment and why they ultimately decided not to go with it. So they succeeded in eliminating snowballing because the round ends as soon as you cap one point at a time and you don't have to make a decision on whether you should defend point A or not because there is no such thing as a transition spawn. You should just always try to defend the point fully until the round ends. She says the matches felt paced better than standard assault, possibly because there's less of this boom or bust gameplay because the action is intensified, but has more intentional short breaks in between, sort of like a Counter-Strike round, for example. But she goes on to explain that unfortunately this new mode will not be going to live because the gameplay felt choppy and disjointed. Some heroes struggle to ever get an ult in this round-based environment, and it didn't feel like Overwatch in many cases. She highlights that there's issues with understandability of the mode and it can be confusing to switch sides so many times and there were cases where a round would reset on point b and a team defending would instinctively head over to where a should be even though the objective now is on b i hear these types of criticisms but i also think when you rework a mode everyone's gonna play it wrong for a while anyway i'm not sure why this was a surprise i mean people play 2 cp wrong now as it is it can be difficult to get a team to regroup when they should regroup and core coordinate ults the way the mode has to be played in order to win. No matter what, the mode just has a knowledge problem in my opinion. But in any case, it's great to know that the devs are finally using the experimental card to put actual experiments on rather than just early balance changes. Last up for the news video, the Overwatch development team will be doing a developer Q&A or ask me anything on Reddit starting at 1.30 p.m. PST, which is about when this video is going to go live. So if you would like to ask the developers a question head on over there and if we get some good responses from the dev team we may even cover it in an upcoming video but with that all said that's it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy it if you did please be sure to leave it a like it really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content and if you haven't already hit subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos go live link to the description is our twitter where we tweet out news updates and dank memes that's been it for me i've been frito for your overwatch we'll see you guys next time